to an F-rated edition of ARG Presents. <laughs> All of our shows are F-rated. That's true. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who got a few Fs that were off the channel, the Brent. Actually, I did very well in school, thank you very much. Dumb as a hammer, folks. So, if you joined us last week, we spun the wheel and we made the deal. This week, Brent, finally, after years of waiting, yes, the wheel arrived at the Fairchild Channel F console, yes. a system you looked at quite a while ago. I did. I did. Yes, when we were doing a different system, I, I, I instead did research for this. I'd love to remember what that system was. I, it's killing me. Yeah, it's killing me. It too. wasn't like the uh, Wonder Swan or something, was it? No, no. It was, some, it was something equally as obscure. Yep. So, uh, I am not super familiar with the channel. What did you know about it before we looked into it? Well, before looking into it the first time, I knew very little. I mean, yeah. I, nothing, actually, to be fair. Yeah, it is a console that I have seen. I've actually touched. Oh, really? See, I've, I've, I've never, never touched actually. One. I've, not, I've never got to actually touch the joysticks, but I've, I've been to uh, uh, you know game conventions and whatnot. Sure. I had one out or for sale, but I've never actually got to play one. Uh, so uh, a, a very unusual console. I uh, I took a look to see what the what it was all about. Sure. Um, so the Fairchild Channel F. This thing was also known as the Fairchild Video Entertainment System, right? That was actually probably a better name. Yeah, well, the Channel F. Hey, what's you know what the F stands for, right? No, it stands for fun. It's oh. fun. All the right. Cha- it's the Channel Fun. So this was manufactured by the Fairchild Semiconductor Outfit. Uh, they were a pretty big deal back in the day. Uh, this is considered a second generation console brand. Uh, do you can you name what's considered the first generation console? I'd, I'd imagine like Pong's. That's right. You're right. Yeah. You're and your Odyssey ones and, yeah. that, and that sort of thing. So this is still in, incredible old. Uh, released in North America in 1976 and yeah, in Japan in '77. Uh, this ran until not until 1983, which I didn't realize I had that. Well, that's a long lifespan if you think about for it. For this thing, for for as little as released for it, I agree. This was that's pretty incredible. Now. Uh, just for fun, what do you think the entry price on this bad boy was? Oh, in, in back 1976. In, in 76, uh, I'll say 99 bucks. Oh no, sir, 169. In today's wad, that's, that's somewhere in the ballpark of 750. Yeah, that's really expensive. Now, holy cow! There's one thing, and you have to be an old guy to get this. There's one thing that you have to consider when you're dealing with the console of this age, and the Pong systems too. Sure. And, and it was certain to sit the Atari, but by then people were sort of gotten used to it. The fact that you could actually do something that would put something on your TV oh, yeah. was astonishing. Yes. And so the Fairchild would have been considered a pretty impressive unit uh, just on the basis that you could put stuff on your TV and you could do stuff with it. I remember yeah. the first time we actually saw stuff on a TV, it blew our minds. The Pong system that my uncle had, you it, we couldn't believe it. You were actually affecting the TV. You yeah. felt, and it, it, this seems hokey. No, no, no. I, I, I 100% understand what it you're saying. It is hokey in a way. No, but no, I mean, no. I, I get it. I get it. I'm it, old enough to get it. It's a simpler time when you watch TV, you didn't actually, couldn't even do anything on the TV. And so... The modern day equivalent would be kind of like virtual reality, where you... you when you move your head, the scene moves with you. Right, but that's that's far far less hokey than this. This is that you're. This just reminds me that, that the late seventies were uh, uh, the electronics in it were sort of at the very end. They were starting to really come out the home electronics, and this is something uh, that uh, was a mind blower. Now uh, again, I'm not, I didn't know anyone that had a fair child, uh, child channel F at all, and there's probably a reason, and that's the overall sales. Uh, now. This is the early, this is the late seventies, mid late seventies. So everything's sketchy, you know. Um, I tried to find other numbers aside from what wiki list, and all I found was the same set of numbers, which usually means people just copied the wiki. Uh, as of seventy seven, they they think they were they had sold around two hundred fifty thousand Fairchild Channel S, but and that's good to keep in mind. It came out in seventy six and seventy seven, so there's no telling. That seems. Wow. There's no telling how many of these things are out there. They're, they're not super rare, to be honest with you. They're not super. Yeah. I mean, you see them. You know, there is not. There's not nearly as many as say an Atari 2600, but they're they're out there. Uh, you see them around. So, what was the Fairchild Channel F? Well, uh, what it did was uh, allowed you to actually have interchangeable ROM cartridges. Yeah, right? carts. 
uh, and it had uh, a unique. Tell the folks about the joystick. Now you you have you've seen, you've never used one of these, but you've seen them. They're the the uh, uh, sort of like a uh, uh, <clears throat> paddle stick. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. They're thin and long. I'll, I'll throw a picture up there, and it, but they're they're very unusual. Yeah. Uh, and for the time, uh, and it's a very, um, it's you know I, I've never actually like I said got to hold one, but I've heard they're not bad. To yeah. Be honest with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so to put things in perspective, uh, the the Magnavox Odyssey, which uh, had a bunch of games. That were uh, that's the original the Odyssey, original not Odyssey, the, two. the okay. original Odyssey. It came out in 1972, so it's what? a long time. Oh. So there was a good gap in there before yeah. the. Of course, that gap was filled by any number of about a million Pong machines. Sure, yeah, that's, play, and some had overlays and that's so. Viva La Rasa, right? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. So um, the uh, the F is. That was considered the first console with a microprocessor. It had the Fairchild F8 processor in it, Brent. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes sense. They make their, their, sure. you know, they make something. They do it, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also considered the first, uh, the first game machine that used that used cartridges. Yes. All right. Yep. So there's Very that. Revolutionary. It also had color, and the color was not due to an overlay. Yep. Yep. The palette sucked, but it was there. Yeah. It was red, blue, and green. Uh, and and this is also the first machine that you could get that you could actually play a computer opponent. Yes. Up to yep. that point, everything. And this is true. And I remember distinctly sitting around with a Pong machine and trying to play with two the two uh, controllers sure. when I was bored by myself. We, now, we did not have a Pong machine, but my uh, relatives had one. Yes. So I would go there and play. And of course, no one wanted to play with old little kid Aaron. He's like sitting there like an idiot. So yeah, I was a kid that played Pong by himself. And you still lost. That's yeah, amazing. I know it is. It is quite astounding. Something else that I like this feature: the uh, Fairchild Channel F also had uh, like a, a pause button. Yes, uh, it was hold. called the hold button. Yep. That's right, and it let people pause the machine, and you could also even change how fast the game was going for, uh, right there when you hit the hold button, which is that's kind of neat. Um, the ch the F was only out a year before the twenty six hundred came around. The 2600 had double the RAM that the uh, Fairchild Channel F had. The F, the, the Atari had 128 bytes of RAM. Yeah. <laughs> to put it in perspective, that's it's quite astounding. So that means the Fairchild had 64 bytes of memory. Now, if you, and it, that's amazing that you can make anything. That you can do that, anything with you know, it, yes. I'm no programmer, but good God almighty, that's that's incredible uh, to me. Uh, it's it's theorized that Atari yoinked the Fairchild's name. I mentioned earlier that the uh, Fairchild was originally called the Video Entertainment System. Right. And Atari. Uh, oh yeah. All right. Uh, the Atari had the v the Video Computer System, so they ended up changing their name. Um, this the uh, Channel F, the electronics, the guts of it were developed by a fellow named Jerry Lawson. Uh, he's, I've heard him interviewed a bunch of times. He's a pretty interesting cat, uh, and I think he did a bunch of other stuff. He's a, he's a, uh, uh, well, I, th I, don't, I think he may have passed away. I'm not 100% sure on that, but, uh, you know, he, he was the man. It's amazing. It's like, you know, it's sort of like the Odyssey. It was sort of the same thing. It's a one-man operation. Um, so let's talk about the actual abilities of the Channel F, you know, uh, it could have it could have one plane of graphics and one of four background colors per line, only three plot colors to choose from, which are red, green, and blue. And it could and uh, that you could have the, a white background if you set it, you could have white if you set the background to black. Yes. All right, so that's sort of like a fourth a fourth color there. Um, it had a resolution of 128 by 64. <laughs> that's incredibly low. And it had, uh, it had 102 by 58 pixels visible. And again, it only had 64 bytes of RAM. 64 bytes. I can't get over that. Yes, that's, that's a little tiny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you knew you had something special when the original cart, video cart came out, which is what they called the cartridges for this thing. Tic-tac-toe would allow you to actually play the computer. Like yes. I said, it was quite a, 
quite quite remarkable. I mean, it's funny to think about that uh, that 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 was a thing. Um, joysticks, as we mentioned, have a like a uh, they're like it's almost like holding a stick, basically. Yeah. I mean, without the base, and they've got a little gimmick on top that like it's it's a triangle. Yes, you know, and. <laughs> They they allowed eight way movement, which is kind of cool. You could also twist the uh, the paddle at the top, which is uh, which was obviously used quite a bit for like yes. pong pong like games. Uh, the original unit had a small compartment for storing the controllers. That's easy, that, that's something Atari ripped off too. If in the fifty two hundred, it's amazing because it the fifty two hundred does not have a small cart. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's got a huge yeah. massive trunk. It has a cloth compartment or, or a you know, boot. For you, folks you, over the you can live on that. Uh, believe it or not, there was a uh, uh, there was a company that made joysticks for the Channel F. It was called <coughs> it was the Zircon. It, they were called Zircon, and the they were called they had a thing called the Channel F Jet Stick. Kind of neat. Uh, the one thing about the Fairchild Channel F System Two, the joysticks on it were detachable. Oh, so that was the Channel One F One. They were not detachable. They were pretty much stuck with them. Um. So, let's talk about some of the games that came out for this thing, Brent. Now, the cartridges on this, uh, there were 27 video carts, right, uh, that were released in the that were released in the United States. And this is back when Fairchild owned them and eventually when they kind of sold off to Zircon. Uh, the cartridges were usually about $20. Yeah. So, $20. That's pretty expensive. Yeah, that, it, you're probably, it's, it's funny, that's just... Bucks. Parches, no, they weren't that bad, but they were they were they were pretty pricey. And if you look at them, they almost look the label going to remind me of like an eight track. Yes, you know, yeah, they, they were definitely going with that. Which vibe. I which I think is kind kind of neat. And some of the cartridges had more stuff on it, like would have more than just one thing on it. So uh, I'm going to just, just briefly just touch on some of these names. And it's funny when you look when you listen to these names, not a whole lot of creativity in these names. They just, no, well, they want you to know what you're getting for the most part. Yeah. You've got uh, Video Cart 1, uh, which had Tic-Tac-Toe, Shooting Gallery, Doodle, and Quadra Doodle. It's funny because we had an Odyssey 2, and uh, multi-carts were a thing there. That really wasn't a thing for very long in most of the systems. Well, I, th- I think that what it was was all those Pongs had the variations. Yeah. So they were kind of simulating that. A Video Cart 2 had Desert Fox and Shooting Gallery. I'm just going to zip through these. You got Video Blackjack, Space War. <laughs> Got to have that one. Math quiz. Uh, math quiz one and two. Those are two separate cards, mind you. Magic numbers. Drag race. Uh, video card 10 was a big one. Listen to this. You get maze. You know that's good. Yeah. Jailbreak. Blind man's bluff. And trailblazer. Wow. Same and, value. Of course, you got card games. You got Here's baseball. Robot war and torpedo. That sounds pretty cool. Sonar search. Some memory matching games. Then you've got... Uh, my game, you've got Pinball Challenge. That's the, probably the game I've played the most on the Fairchild. Uh, and it's 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 okay. You know, it's, it's it's not what I would call a great game of pinball, but given what you had to work with, that's pretty good. I love Video Card 18. you got to have Hangman. Yeah. You can sit around playing Hangman. Checkers. I guess it would be neat to actually be able to play The computer checkers, and yeah. Hangman, yeah. And Checkers. Uh, Video uh, 20 is one of yours. Uh, bowling, slot machine, Galactic Space Wars, Pro Football, uh, Casino Poker, and Alien Invasion. One thing, you can't uh, uh, you can't believe the importance of card games for these old systems. Oh, like, like sure. Especially if the computer is playing with you. That's amazing. Yeah. that's comp- that, that gets your older crowd in there. Card games were a... Uh, <clears throat> That was a, they were a big mover. Oh, you know, back, yeah, a back staple, in the day. a staple. It's funny because why did people like card games? Because they used to play a lot of cards, yeah. and eventually the video game pretty much eliminated a lot of card playing. If you think about it, so it's kind of fun. Now uh, they're still making games for the old uh, Fairchild. A uh, clone of Pac Man was released in two thousand nine, which is kind of neat. I actually looked at this and it was, it was wacky. So as I mentioned, there was a Fairchild Channel F two. Uh, in in '79, Zircon, remember them, International bought the rights to the Channel F and redesigned the console as the Channel F System Two. All right, you notice there's no Fairchild in there. Um, so basically, it's there's not a ton of difference, uh, but uh, they again they made it so the joysticks would ca- would come off. There were six games released uh, when this game when the new set, Channel F uh, Two came out. 
Uh, and again, uh, the uh, now the sound also came through the RF because in the, in the very first model, the sound would come out of the console. The console that was yeah. sort of a standard thing. That was thing. a thing back then, yeah. You know, so I, I think they always thought that was kind of neat. So <clears throat> the Channel F, you know, ran into effectively the juggernaut that was the, the console wars of the early 80s when you've got the Atari 2600, you've got the Intellivision, you've got the ColecoVision, and to a lesser extent, you've got the Odyssey 2. Uh, in there battling for for domination and it just got steamrolled because you can imagine uh, if you've played atari games which are obviously more prevalent that something that's half as powerful as the atari is not very powerful yeah and these games are uh basic i'll say that not to be uh not to underplay the importance of it, but they're they're basic games. Yeah, they are. And you've got to consider that uh sure they're basic, but this these are games you could play uh, and you actually felt like you were playing something as yeah. opposed to just watching a dot beep up around the screen. So, the at Fairchild Channel F, it's a tough system to wrap your head around in 2019 uh, if you weren't there when it came out or know the what was going on. The know feeling. the landscape, yeah. You know, because, I mean, uh, um, it looked, the Model T looks junky compared to the uh, a Porsche, but uh, guess what? The Model T was the first one to get you around with a yeah. motor, so, you know, pretty good. So... <clears throat> We, we uh, looked over the vast, not-so-vast library of the Fairchild Channel F. I guess I'll lead the charge this week, uh, Branster. I, you know, it's funny. I looked at a bunch of games to uh, determine which one to play, and I played a bunch of stuff. And the one, I don't know why this one appealed to me, but I, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, I picked uh, Dodge It. <laughs> Simply put, Dodge It. Now, well, do you want to smack into it? No, you want to dodge it. That's right. It says what it is, right? Bam! Instructions in the title. That's I right. love it. That's right. So, Dodge It came out in 78. Of course, these are pretty much all developed by Fairchild. And um, this was a uh, an unusual take on... Uh, um, I'm not sure I've seen a game quite like it, I'd say. I mean, it's as one could have existed, given the parameters of it. But uh, So, <clears throat> what you've got here is a uh, game where you are uh, controlling a little dot, effectively. And you are trying... A various size dot, depending yeah. on which mode you play. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> you are your only task is to avoid everything that comes at you. Right? Yep. It sounds simple, doesn't it, right? Uh, so you are in a... You're basically trapped in a... In, a, in an Square. area. Yeah. A, a, a rectangle. And that's right. That's right. And... Uh, as you go through the game, you can see how few notes are on this because it's not that complex. <laughs> uh, as you as you go through the game, basically balls will start, or not balls, other squares because there were no balls, <clears throat> will start careening in from different parts of the screen. They're like they'll come sliding into the box. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's the way it works. It's actually quite simple. Uh, so when you get to the longer you last, your score runs up like a t reverse timer. Yes. Okay. So. Once you uh, once you get to two hundred, uh, ball comes out, and then another ball, and every one hundred points you earn after that, another ball enters the play field. All right, so first you're dodging a ball, then you're dodging two balls, then you're dodging three balls, and eventually, if you're good enough, you can get to the point where you're dodging nine balls. Yeah, I oh. never got that far. Nine? Well, I, I would love to play this with the real controller because it would have been it would have been quite yeah. interesting. But you've got nine balls, and it's actually there's no. Uh, this is all running perfectly. Yeah, no lag, no video lag, no lag at all. It's yeah. all really smooth. And so, <clears throat> as you play, the balls come 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 creating. And, and and remember, your the timer goes up as your your score goes up as the as long as you stay active. Sure. If you can find a nice little corner and hope nothing hits you, you can you know or, you can hide there for a while. Yeah, eventually everything. You can hide there for a while. It's like the screensaver uh, on a DVD player. It's going to hit yeah. the corner eventually, right? You know, you sit there and watch it. Um, but and if, so, and you go for a high score. That, that's the game. Now there are uh, there are a couple variances of the game. Uh, you you like Brent said that the play field sort of changes. Uh, every so often, and, it, and it's it's actually pretty interesting too. I mean, it it, it keeps you from being bored. You know? It adds something where they didn't have to add anything at this point to give you a little extra value. That's right. And you can change the the size of what you're controlling, that, the man you're controlling. That's the difficulty. You can basically you can have a, a very small dot will give you a better. And, and change. literally, just a pixel. It's yeah. just, and that is when you can really, if you wanted to just cheese it, you could just hide in the corner. As the pixel, eventually something's going to hit you, but you're going to get up to 
five or six balls before you even have to worry about it. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> I think that's an interesting idea for difficulty. Yeah, just changing the size. It's so simple. It's it's perfect. You it's know? perfect for this game. And so, uh, aside from aside from different size balls <clears throat> and the speed, you can change the speed of, yep. of the game. Uh, you can also uh, it, basically what you've got here is an amateur and a pro, right? Which that and so that gives you a different uh, difficulty level. You also have uh, two player simultaneous play. Yep, man. Yep. Now let me tell you something. I didn't get to play with two people, but that would be kind of fun. To uh, I mean, you could play this with one. That's something else they added. That they wouldn't have to. You could just add. You could say, okay, here's my score. Beat it, and you give the guy the joystick. Two people at once, it's fun to have uh, it's that uh, the comp. Who can survive the longest yeah. type feel? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, 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 I, I agree. <clears throat> so, uh, I believe this was, um, uh, as I recall, let me look and make sure before I say something stupid. I believe this was cart uh, 16. Let me double check here. Um, yeah, dark, it was video cart 16. Uh, again, released 1231.78. So, you got two players, you got various size balls, you got rotating. Backgrounds, right? Pretty good. All that stuff's pretty good. Um, that's it. That I mean, that's your. Game. That's as simple as it gets. There are no complex yep. strategies. Um, a few, just a little, a couple of trivia tidbits. Um, this game had advertisements that talked about the game and said that there's a maximum of seven balls when you play, which is wrong. So they actually <laughs> under <laughs> they undersold the game when they <laughs> released that. Uh, the uh, so that's kind of funny. The cards for this were um, often this kind of bizarre, almost a mustard yellow, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Weird, weird choice. Again, they sort of look. It stands very, out though. They look. They look sort of the labeling and stuff sort of very eight tracky. Well, it, it is definitely a uh, sign of the times. Did you ever have an eight track, by the way? Yeah. You really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I had dads. I never owned my own. Okay. Did you ever actually play an eight yes. track? Okay, well, yep. that's kind of cool. I can't remember. Yeah, Daddy Jimmy used, Rogers, I believe. Dad used to have a clock radio with an 8 track. That's it. And of course, uh, uh, my robot runs on 8 track tape, yep. too. So you got that 2XL. <clears throat> um, I looked, sadly, could not find any reviews for this game. I know you're stunned. Nah, uh, the, the Fair Channel <laughs> channel is uh, woefully under reviewed. Yeah, it is. It, it, there's not a ton of footage. I will say that uh, the vibe I got from this game, it seemed fairly positive. There's another. There's a podcast called the uh, Channel F Files. I think it's what it's called. It's from the. Uh, it's from uh, uh, Subaru Brat, aka uh, guy from Retro Gaming Roundup, and then Willie, the toy review guy, which I know him from his from his various videos. And they have a show where they 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 basically go over the Fairchild Channel F games, you know. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean, if you're in, I mean, think about doing a whole show or podcast just specifically aimed at the 30 Fairchild. 30 and you're done. <laughs> I mean, you're, you'd be getting those games out pretty quick. You know, that'd be a pretty quick show. So, here's the thing. Now, you kind of skipped over the important part. All Did right. you enjoy this game? Um, yes. I, I, I thought it was fun. I mean, given the parameters, I thought it was fun. This is, let's, let's be completely honest. Is anyone going to break out the Channel F and sit around playing it for like a week? No, they're not. It's not going to happen. No, it's not the games I saw. And I looked at my five or six, and I'd played a bunch. Um, but uh, I thought this was an interesting game. It was different, which I, I like different. And so I, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, Would you sit down with Luke and have him play this yeah, game? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Luke, <clears throat> Luke could get a kick out of it. Little kids, can you can get around it. Now, uh, let me... Uh, I, I want to give my opinion on this. Okay, go ahead. Because uh, I found your game to be... Uh, an interesting roller coaster ride for myself, considering what it was. When I loaded it up, I had a ton of fun. Yeah, I was bebopping around, dodging the squares. I was playing as the big guy, the little guy. I played all the variations. Yeah, <clears throat> all two of them. And well, <laughs> both variations. And I and uh, I was like, this is good fun. Aaron picked a real winner here. And then about ten minutes later, I I, uh, I, I was playing and I, I said, you know what? I, I'm sitting here dodging all these things. Why? Why? I'm just going to sit in the corner. And I beat my high score. Yeah. And I was like, well, that sucks. Well, you can't always do that. And then there's, there's graphic glitches in the game. When the when the new ball comes in and kind of tears 
Oh, the, that's not a glitch. Though. That's, that's a glitch. No, it's supposed no, to do that. No, that's a glitch. If you could go and hide in that area or go into that area, then it'd be a feature. No, this is a glitch. That's not a glitch. I don't. I don't agree with you. I think that. I think that's cool when it comes careening in like that. It looks neat. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, something we also felt to mention was the awesome explosion when you lose. Yeah, yeah, it's a little spirally. It's not little. It takes uh, up the whole screen. It's a, okay, bo- it's a multicolored big... box. It goes. It's really awesome. I thought it's pretty. It, I mean, for the time, yeah, it's Listen, it's you're okay. Being too tough. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing, though. So I played this, and then I, I I sat in the corner and I got a high score, and I was like, this sucks. And I started really thinking, am I having fun playing this? And my ultimate answer was no. No, I didn't have any fun playing it because you can. You're over the map. No, oh, that's the thing. That was a roller coaster ride. When I was actually engaging with the game, and I was sitting there moving around, trying to dodge the squares, being interactive with the environment, I had a good time. When I just tried to get a high score, and I just hid in the corner or hit to the edge, and or just went up and down on on the left side or the right side, I hated it. I had no fun at all. So. If I was trying to do, if I was trying to get a high score, I didn't have any fun. But if I was just trying to uh, play the game as I envisioned it was supposed to be played, I had an okay time. Weird. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a, a pleasant diversion. If it had like a desktop version, I could just play when I was bored for like two seconds, be perfect. Just something to screw around with, you know. But that's I don't know, good. man. I, I disagree on that. So. Um, I uh, saw that we had one review. Our good buddy Graham W. Vepke, he's back. Uh, Dodge it. Uh, eye burning three colors. That's true. And that's, oh, you can't do anything about that. There's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> and simple game player with a channel left delivers. And this game is actually quite interesting. In the single player game, you control a blue square that changes size each round. And you must, as the name suggests, dodge the red squares inside a red bordered play field and beat your previous score to gain points. That's all true. The game has enough variety with different speeds and sizes, and there are some sneaky things that happen when the blocks enter the play field. That's what you were talking about. The sounds are limited, but the end of level animation is epilepsy-inducing, so be very wary of the, of if this affects you. 7 out of 10. I agree. All that stuff. I think that's too high. Epileptic-inducing, epilepsy, yeah, maybe. <clears throat> I mean, this whole system will screw with you. They didn't give a crap about flashes. Oh, yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't care about that stuff at all. Um, I'll look this up on the eBay um, you can get this thing sealed in or complete in box. Excuse me for fifty five bucks. If you just want the manual on the cart, you can get it for twenty five bucks. Not too bad. It's not bad. Again, not these, bad. these carts are not mega mega rare, generally, uh, but they're not. You can't just go and get it for like a buck. Right. They're not. You, yeah. There's no bargain bin with these piling up. So from Brent's roller coaster, <clears throat> emotional roller coaster ride, we're gonna go over to what he picked. And Brent, tell the folks what you got there. Video Whizball. Video Whizball. Part 20. I this one I actually had played before, believe it or not. Uh, <coughs> video, I actually chose this because the game has history. Okay. Bef- before gameplay, let's talk about history. Aaron, what is the very first Easter egg that was ever found on in a video game? Now, I, I had always thought it was the one in, in, in Adventure. In Adventure, right. right. So that was the one that was built. That, that is that is incorrect. Yeah, I Would knew you that. like I, to try it one more time? No, I give up. What do you got? The very first Easter egg in a video game is actually from the arcades and is called Starfield. Okay. And it was done by uh, holding down... I'm sorry, Starship, not Starfield. Starship. It was done by holding down uh, a series of buttons on the on the game and inserting coin two coins at the exact same time. And after you do that, you let go of the buttons. And it says, Hi, Ron. And gives you ten extra lives. Hmm. Now, can you imagine if they did that kind of Easter egg in an arcade game in, like, the 90s? Where yeah, you get to get free games. How often? I mean, that's got to be real tough to find that. It was incredibly tough. In fact, they didn't also, find it. you had to it. pay. You had to pay two quarters to do that. Yeah, it, it wasn't discovered. The game was released in 1977. Yeah. The Easter egg was revealed and discovered in 2017. Wow. Uh, and that's only because the developer said, I remember putting something in this game. But I don't remember how to do it. And they took apart the code and found it. So that is how they actually found the very first ever Easter egg. What's the pertinence of this to what you're discussing? Well, 
I knew there would be. What some. is the very first console Easter egg? It's not adventure. It is not adventure. There you go. And it's not a uh, video whiz ball either. <coughs> but it is for the channel F. What is it? The very first console uh, Easter egg was on the demo cart. All right. If you held a certain combination of buttons and then let go, it would display the person who programmed the demo cart's name. Now, is a demo cart is not a commercially released cart, though. So, what do you think the first commercially released video game Easter egg cart was? This is a long way to get here. Is it video? Is it for your game? It is video whiz ball. <clears throat> Before uh, Adventure, which is commonly called the first Easter egg, yep. uh, Video Whizball had a Easter egg where if you played on game 43, set the score to 67, won, and then both uh, players are destroyed by the Whizball, and you start a new game, it puts his name up on the screen. Hmm. And uh, that is the first commercially commercially released console Easter egg. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. And this was back in a time where uh, developers did not get credit for their games. Uh, they wanted it to be under the Atari flag or the Channel F flag. <coughs> so they didn't want individuals to be to be recognized. It was. Oh, did you play that great game by Atari? So, putting in Easter eggs to reveal who made the game was a big deal. Mm. Who programmed the game was a big deal. So, now that we've done the history lesson... Is that why you picked the game? It was. It was. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. But, <clears throat> I'll have to say, when I played Video Whisk Ball, I was really impressed. I had a lot of fun with this game for a couple reasons. First, let's go over what Video Whiz Ball is. Video Whiz Ball is sort of like air hockey. Mm -hmm. If <coughs> you shot the puck with a tank or a, 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 a ship, uh, and you the ship could shoot straight ahead, 45 degrees angles up or 45 degree angle down, and you shot at the puck and your opponent did the same thing and you tried to score a goal. Now, the puck is big and massive, so if you run into the puck or the puck runs into you, you just get smushed, and it just keeps on going, so it can run you over. Uh, you determine what kind of score you want to go to, and you play the game, and there's actually six variations of games in this. You've got your basic game where every goal is worth a point, shoot it in, everybody has a good time. Then you have Basic Plus, and this is a, a, a ongoing theme. Basic Plus allows you to steer your bullets, sort of like combat. Got to have that. <coughs> it's very combat-y. Or I yeah. guess combat is very this. Uh, and then you've got uh, uh, the mode called a bonus whiz balls, where you have between one and four whiz balls, and they are uh, valued one to four points. Uh, and then you've got... Uh, bonus plus, where you can control the shots when you do that. And I, I didn't go up into the different games. I should have. I didn't realize there were so many different variants. And then there. you've got the best mode. Yeah. This is the best mode. This is why there are games where you have, you know, you, scores of 50 and 60. Because if you did that while ones, it would suck. Super bonus. This is when the whiz balls increase in value from 1 to 9 the longer they're on the play field. Oh, that is neat. So, you know... It's very creative, If you it? got one, you just shoot in immediately one point. But if you got one that's been hanging around, it could be worth up to nine points. And, of course, you've got Super Bonus Plus. Man. Where you get a just, uh, you same game, but you can steer the steer your bullets. That's a lot of variation. But yeah, there's yeah. more. There's always more. You can play it one player versus the computer. You can play it two players versus your buddy. And then the ultimate reason, this is the top number one uh, game for the Fair Channel. Fair Child. That's right. Computer versus computer. 
Head to head, place your bets. Let's do it. Place your bets. I love when you when you can have the computer play. That's just itself. showing off there. Oh my that. gosh! And it runs smooth. It runs. The it, there is no lag. No matter how many whiz balls are on the screen, you can shoot. You have one bullet on the screen at a time. If you uh, uh, are shooting right next to a whiz ball. You know, you can shoot, 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 and you know, you get a nice little string going. If you're shooting across the screen at a whiz ball, you got to wait for that bullet to travel all the way across and hit whatever it's going to hit. <clears throat> you can shoot your opponent, and when your opponent dies, uh, or you die, you disappear for, uh, usually it's three or four seconds, and then your goal is left unattended, and somebody can score on you. If you've got uh, a bunch of whiz balls flying around, they carry momentum. So if it's going fast, it hits another whiz ball. That other whiz ball ricochets off at, yeah. at an amazing speed. Very much like an, like if you had a couple hockey pucks. Yeah. Right also, yeah. if a whiz ball is coming to you, if you're fast enough and you pound that shoot button, you can see the whiz ball slowing down, and then you keep shooting it, and it starts building that momentum the other way. That's awesome. Yeah. I've really dug this game. Yeah. Uh, if you just Look at this game on the surface, and you're like, Meh, it's like Pong. Or it's like, you know, it's air hockey. Meh. No. No, 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 no. You have to dig a little bit deeper. You have to go into the game modes. You have to set up computer versus computer matches and watch the computer go because the computer is hardcore. It is angling shots. It's bouncing bullets off the walls. It's bouncing whiz balls into other whiz balls and ricocheting them across the screen. Great fun. This was a great little package to find. I was really amazed at how much I enjoyed this. It's funny because I, I had played this years ago. Sure. I, and, and I had no idea what was going on. That's right. This And I felt, I'm not going to lie to you, I felt more than a little stupid when I had to look up some rules on this game. <clears throat> this 64-byte game. To try to figure out what was happening. Uh, it is a very clever game. Yeah. And for, I mean, and they... Listen, every one of these old systems had a Pong variant, right? I mean, yes. And so you had to think outside of the box. I mean, both our games are Pongy, all right? I mean, I mean, I mean, you've got a dot. A bouncing and, yeah, dot. Yeah. And and so you've got to really think outside the box. Now, the 2600 did this a lot, when they, with, especially with game variations of simple games like Space Invaders or Asteroids, where they, they gave you all these additional variations, options, yeah. you know? I looked these options up, and I saw, but I didn't actually try. I only tried two, but I thought that it was. I didn't. I, now I'm dying to go try the other ones. But I mean, it was a. a it's. I mean, it is hockey-ish. You know. Yeah, it's definitely air hockey-ish. You got goals on either side of the screen. You didn't mention a little tune. Uh, oh, the, which is the, which is this. <laughs> the music and sound effects in this game are really good. Well, I wouldn't say. I mean, it does have them. It's really good for beeps and boops. Yeah, it they are. It's a uh, brain melting. So that little opening tune, it's like holy. Oh, it's fine. It's brain melting. Nah, it's fine. Remember how my thing had the epilepsy explosion? This is the epilepsy. This, this is the audio <laughs> from that explosion. But yeah, I I, lo I, I kind of thought this was a cool game. It's another one I'd like to play the action controller. I'm going to have to break down and get one of these stupid Fairchilds just so we They'll can try some of this yeah. crap. I, well, I'll, I'll 250 get on eBay is what I found the system going for. I actually for. looked this up. You can get a System 2 in the box. I saw one going for 100 bucks. Oh, working? Yeah. And a System 1 is more expensive. You're going for about, a, in the box, you're going to put about a buck 80. And there's no reason to get the System 1. I would just probably get the, the console. Yeah, yeah, I would get the second one. But I mean, this game. I'm trying to think if I like this one better than mine. I mean, oh, yeah. mine is something that you could, if you're an old arcade guy, you could have fun trying to best your score. Yeah. It reminded me of like something like an old Activision game or something where you had that timer going and you just tried to so I like those games. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It, I would rather, I'd rather play mine single, and I think I'd rather play yours with two players. It'd be a lot more fun. <sighs> the computer's tough. Uh, I, I get what you're saying, but... This in my game, there was more variations, which gave it more longevity. It's definitely a better. You know how many game, game variations there are in mine? Uh -uh. Seventy-two. Well, I, seventy-two. They, they put how many lot, variations were there in yours? There weren't that many. Two. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Two. I mean, technically four. I guess we had two players. The uh, the truth of the matter is, yours is a more complex game. Now, listen, I'm not. I'm calling it out. I agree. It's a it's a, it's a good game. Um, we got another review here from our buddy Graham. All right. He also chimed in on this particular uh, effort. 
I'm sure Graham said it is the best game he's ever played. Um, this game I have heard Graham. about before, referred to as drunk air hockey. <laughs> that's a guess, yeah, by some, and was one of the first video games to contain an Easter egg. Yes. The game does take a while to figure out what is needed, but it is loosely based on Pong and air hockey. And bring the earplugs for that intro music. There you go. It's not that bad. In the game, the blue side is on the left, the green side is on the right. And while you first think you score points getting the puck into the goal area, and by hitting your opponent makes them disappear for a moment, but that isn't the aim either. And eventually you discover what you need to do. It's a weird game, and I think I'd rather play bowling on the Channel F or maybe be drunk and play this game again if I revisit this system. Six out of ten. Oh, I think that's harsh. He he, he actually gave it a lower score. I, than he I gave think it. that's harsh because <laughs> I, I I also think the appeal of this. Uh, I mean, I can see setting up many tournaments for this game. I can't see doing that with your game. I can see setting up having this play in the background or something, to just as having noise and, and a little bit of visual stimulus. Having the computer play itself where you do something else. I think this game has appeal and. Something you can do with, you know, there's there's more than just play it. Uh, I think we can both agree that these, oh, and I've, mine. I've played a lot of, uh, of Fairchild stuff. I haven't played 30. I've played 10, 12. These are two of the best titles, I think. I think they're, yeah, I, think they're I, I have good. read that. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know what else is some fun? What's that? Spinning that wheel. Oh, spin that sucker. So that's tell, only fun about half the time. Tell the people what we added this week, Brinster. <clears throat> I believe... Under mu- much protest, we added board games. Normal, regular, no electronic component board games. Yes, this is a pretty broad category. So let's give it a shot. Ah, uh, you know, you, you got a preference, Aaron? You know, I mean, I'm easy. Something that something I can get into, that's all I ask. I thought the Fairchild was fun. Fire it up. You know, we got a lot of uh, color on the wheel. A lot of different uh, eras of pad pieces. All right. Good healthy spin there. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, what is that? What we get? 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 Nope. It's in. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to call foul. What? Yes. This pie piece was actually out. Oh, okay. I'm going to allow it because it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. We spun board games. <laughs> right out of the gate. I. What are you doing? There's no controversy in spinning a wheel. Yes, there is. It is spinning a wheel. That's all there yeah, is to it. There's yeah, no. You don't. You know what? It, the, the the fans the fans are going to write in. They're going to say that you screwed it up again, Aaron. I didn't spin the wheel. You spun Every time it. You put the pie piece in. What are you trying to? Why do you spin you it so hard, Hercules? Calm that crap down. <clears throat> this was your piece, Get him, guys. Get this him. was your no. Listen, I was just holding the wheel. He what put the piece in? What the? Uh, what are the parameters here for board games? It cannot have an electronic component. Bam, done. That's, that's it, eh? That's it. So, but not card games. There has to be a board involved. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you can't pick, like, spades. You do, can't play... that, do we going to go for a certain years? No. So It's all open. So, uh, for throughout history, any board game throughout history of time and space. That's correct. It, it cannot use a regular deck of cards as, as its only component. All right, fair that's enough. Um, so, before we go, just a little uh, housekeeping here. Uh, we have, uh, we are drawing, we are less than a month away, actually, from Amigathon 2019 to be held in the luxurious boat of car ballroom, a.k.a. his basement. Uh, myself, the Brent, oh, we the boat, something for... we'll, all be, we'll all be converging uh, to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Yes, excellent calls. We'll be playing 12 straight hours of nothing but Amiga. Sweet, sweet Amiga, God lover. I love that. I love that computer. And we're going to be getting our fill as we go through and play. Uh, if you're interested in... Uh, I was to say, Amiga is something you can play 12 hours of and not want to not jump off a You're damn skippy you play 24 hours of as we proved last year. Um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you're interested in uh, uh, getting in, you can reserve your spot in the game rotation now. It's time's running out, man. If you go, if you go to everythingamiga.com and click on the uh, uh, Amigathon banner, they can get you set up. Uh, I will say their spaces are very limited. Yes, uh, and they're I, going quick. I believe at last look, we had already raised uh, near five hundred dollars in just it's reservations. It's incredible. Our goal this year is to get a, is get two grand, uh, which I think would be I think that's doable. 
I hope so. Yeah. If the good people allow it. Yeah, and uh, uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Also, uh, ending that day, high noon, uh, I will be pulled on the carpet for the end of the Amigo Aaron weight loss wager, uh, where I, I wagered with the people that I could lose 100 pounds in a little over six months. Uh, and for every pound I come up short, I've got to pay five big bucks, Brent. Five bucks of charity. Now, Aaron, do you have five hundred dollars? No, I don't. So if I lost no money, if I lost zero weight, and I mean, there's the belly. There's some belly right there. If I lost no weight, I'm in for five hundred uh, dollar dudes, fun bucks. What if you gained weight? If I gain weight, it could go exponentially higher. Well, I don't know. Ex- I don't know about exponentially. Could, it, I'm going to guess there's an upper limit to what the no, human weight. It, well, I mean, how much weight can I gain? I could, I could gain a thousand pounds. You never know. And I'd be in for five grand. So, but then you could sell yourself to a circus. Well, that's true. But I'm not going to give that to Cherry. We need that to buy more food. <laughs> so if you want to see if uh, uh, the big boy could get anything done, how close I got to the to the uh, centennial mark there, uh, pop on in. Uh, we, like I said, we're going to be streaming all day. Uh, so And we'll be streaming. I believe we're starting uh, 7 a.m., 6 or 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our so our friends over in, in the Europe can have a good look at this thing, and, and which we have a lot of viewers over there. So this should be a lot of fun. Uh, we hope you will tune in for some or all of it. Uh, we also talked about, Brent, uh, since we're only going 12 hours uh, this year on the Amigathon, because 24 hours, frankly, almost killed us. Yes. Uh, uh, and Boat uh, uh, decided this year we're going to cut it down, and probably a good idea. Yeah. So it's going to be 12 hours of nonstop action, as opposed to last year where we 12 hours of some action, and then 12 hours of us laying around begging begging to be killed uh, for the children's miracle. 12 Network. hours of action, 12 hours of less action. Yeah. So uh, we may pick up some of that slack on the ARG show somewhere towards the end of the year, Brent. We were we yes. already in uh, preliminary discussions uh, for a, uh, an event that would be held here in the, uh, in the ARG studio, the uh, luxurious arcade in my backyard. And so that might be a lot of fun. Yes. That would be a whole different concept with wheel spinning and whatnot. Yes. But the, so, anyway, we hope you join us over there on the Amigathon again, July 20th, 2019. Uh, anybody in the chat you want to say hi to, Brent? Uh, we had a, a lot of latecomers, uh, pretty loose in the in the old chat room tonight. We had Atari Vision coming in early, staying with a strong, a good chatter. I always like that in chat. Uh, <laughs> Lobster Ma- Lobster Nader. Uh, Terminator. That's right. Uh, Picard stopped by, Pixels at Dawn made a late appearance, always glad to have him though, and Necronom. Great, great. Thanks for showing up, y'all. Uh, so, as we mentioned, next week we are going to be playing some board games. We hope you'll join us next week, and thanks for stopping by to learn with us about the Fred Child Channel F. Uh, so, until we meet again, this is Aaron and Brent. F. F. F.